Greetings, Nick Bocock backstage at Allison Chains with Mr. Jerry Cantrell and Mr. Dave Friedman. We are here to discuss the genesis, the birth, if you will, of these beauties here, the JJ100. Double J, dude. Yeah. What, how come Double J? That's the name of my ranch. Uh, my dad and I have a ranch in Oklahoma. It's the Double J. And there you I'm go. Jerry Jr., so he's, he's senior, so it's the Double now, J. So yeah. are the cows branded Double J? <laughs> they, they aren't, but they should be. That's a great <laughs> brand, actually. <laughs> In retrospect, I think we should have put double above the. the no, no, it's, I, I like it. I, I like it better. I like it better. Yeah, you got to be on the inside to know it's the double J. It's all okay, So now we yeah. know. Now yeah. we know it's yeah. the double J. It's a ranch. It's yeah. a cowboy kind of animal. Yeah. Well, that's what we were going for. We were look, going for like a brand. So. So, yeah. as discussed in the first video that you have to watch before you watch this. So if you haven't watched it, tune out. Come back when you're done. <laughs> Jerry's famous. He's built a reputation as being one of the best layers of guitars. Me and Dime had a word, for, had a phrase for you. We called you the Dark Lord of the guitar army, which was <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Which was, you know, because Jimmy Page was the guitar yeah. army guy. You just made it darker. All right, right, right. And right. it's as I said before, it's not about gain. It's girth, and right. you were great at layering boogies, Bogners, Marshalls, AC30s, sure. whatever, whatever it make takes. Yeah, different guitars, different mm -hmm. flavors. Quick question for you. Was that happenstance, or did, could you hear something in your head? Did you layer something down and go, okay, I want something cleaner or something? I have, to give, I have to give a little credit to Dave Jordan for that. Like, uh, uh, when, when we recorded our first two records, uh, he kind of introduced, you know, I was really into keeping it simple, just a nice left, right, you know? And, right. you know, basically we're a three piece with a singer, so uh, that was gonna be plenty big enough with a rhythm track under the solo or whatever. But, uh, you know, on making demos and stuff, I would always mess around and put just little, you know, little layers of right. stuff. And but you know, I, uh, uh, I would mess around with things that didn't really necessarily miss when it was live, right. but it was nice when it was recorded. You right. know, to have that extra depth. So I did like that, but I do have to give some credit to Dave because we he introduced me to the idea of recording multiple passes on either side with multiple different guitar amp combos. So uh, I I got that. I got that from him, and I just kind of ran with it, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. And around that time, around the dirt period, that's when you first in, met this gentleman here, I believe, didn't you? Yeah, you yeah. The yeah. Did, uh, We've had I a long the, association. The, yeah. When he was first looking to find something new to tour with, we were messing around with stuff, and that's when the Bogner preamp came in. That's right. And also the concept of having two different kinds of speakers came in. Right. So one cab, originally on that original rig, which was like a stereo rig, one cab was greenback 25 slash gins and the other was vintage 30s. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So come full circle, years later, I get called um, by Tom Abraham, who was your sound guy at the time. That's right. And you were prepping for the Black Gives Way to Blue record mm -hmm. and getting ready. And he called me in and he goes, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta do something. Because <laughs> I worked with Tom before, and I worked with you before, so I said, yeah, let's do it again. And um, so we came in and put a rig together, you know, based on what Jerry needed out of the rig and what he wanted at the time. It wasn't my amps yet, but they were uh, Bogner and two Bogners, what? Ubershaw and uh, the Alchemist or something. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. at the time, that's mm -hmm. where it started. Gotcha. Well, With I saw rig. in 2010, as I mentioned, I did a rig rundown, for actually vulgar display of power, I should say, for Guitar World with Jerry actually in Phoenix, and he had two prototype treatments. Yes. One was marked mad and pissed, or right. yeah. angry and pissed. And that was the, those were the marshes, I believe. Yeah, that yeah, that, yeah that's when I first, yeah. that's yeah. when I first made some, well, basically it came about, hey, you should try some of these. I don't know. You weren't totally happy, I think, at the time. And we were just trying to dial them in. Dial them in you know? better. Yeah. And you tried them and just like, no, the sound was colossal. It was I like. Really I, I think. I th you know, we we messed we messed a little bit with the with the distortion and the sound, but the, I always liked how how Dave's amps rocked. We were just trying to get, for me, like a particular sort of a semi clean tone. Yeah. That was the thing we probably worked on the longest, what, right? The clean side. The clean sound. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what? But the yeah. concept too was layering, like right. you were talking about. It's it's the the mad amp is a lower gain right. uh, uh, and that's the, driving the, the greenbacks correct yeah and the correct this drives greenback cabinet bottom amp drives vintage thirty cabinet right. the bottom amp has a switch on it the JBE sound right it's uh, more gain gotcha. it's more pissed I designed it to do that part of it to, to be a little angrier 
Thank you. That's right. And it's, and it's that's EO right. 34 flavored, which kind of takes you back to that first. And I brought back to the yeah. I brought brought it back to the two kinds of speakers again. Right. Yes. So sir. I brought that back from the old days because right. I think it long vanished. Right. Right. And 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 it really works because you got the 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 greenbacks are softer and nicer yeah. and Bit more the other ones have cut. Yeah. So the combination really works well. So it's polite yeah. and mad as opposed yeah. to. And then we worked on the clean sound. He wanted a kind of a AC 30 ish sort of a clean. So I worked on putting that sort of thing in it, which we kind of accomplished that. Because you've got the three way bright switch on the. Uh, it's a three way bright switch, but um, we worked on the, on the circuit. The EQ is very much like uh, gotcha. similar to a box. Yeah, because you've got, you've got bass, middle, and treble. Now, is that pre or post gain on the clean? Can you remember? <laughs> the clean is actually sort of a hybrid. Okay. Between sort of an American style clean and, and a Vox kind of clean. Gotcha. Okay. So it's not exactly any circuit, it's a not new a, circuit, but the foul. EQ section is like a Vox. Gotcha. And then I, I think uh, there's a pedal that hits the front a little bit for a little more grit on it. Gotcha. Well, it's a great sound. Yeah. Like we heard sound check. Well, thank really, you. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. It sounds like um, Jerry Cantrell. Imagine that. <laughs> Pretty scary. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's well, a if good it thing. didn't, it would be a problem. Yeah. He well, could be the JJ. He's built me. Uh, he's built me a championship rig. Like I said, you know, I don't build the race car. I just drive it. So I got my. I got my. I got my. I got my crew chief right here. Puts me on the nice rig, and I can just. Uh, I just get to rock. So, but uh, oh, I'm really proud of uh, number one our friendship over the years, and uh, you know Dave's kind of commitment to to making rocking gear you know well, what I mean I, and like and also working what it's work, and also working with individuals you know like what he's doing for me is not necessarily what he's doing with Steve or right. you know or, or uh, you know any of the Mastodon guys mm -hmm. Bill you know I mean he's really trying to he really tailors stuff and it's it's uh, it's that extra little step I think that gotcha. really go, makes this all is the not difference. A, this is not an overnight I believe six years in the making something like that for the Friedman amp no, line for the, or no, for, the, for the how long did this I take think from from start, from start of conversation well, we, to actually hitting production? Oh, it wasn't that long. I mean, okay. it was like five and a half years now. Well, you started with the other prototype amps, the Marshes, and right. to get a model, I mean, it was like a, a year later or something. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, a couple of years ago. Don't believe what you yeah. really is, Ned Kids, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, how, how hard was it to translate what, what Jerry wanted from from something on the record to actually coming out of an app, was that a, was that hard? Or was I knew what it was. Right. I mean, I kind of I, I know the sound. Right. I, I knew what it was. Right. And I'm not. And when I'm he not, played the minute he played the protos, it's like, okay, and I know how to make it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it, yeah. then then it became this big wall of sound. Gotcha. And it's I imagine with you, it's, it's it has to be a big part of its feel, right? It's not just it's it's sound. all feel. Yeah. It's it's pretty much all feel because yeah. it should be a symbiotic yeah. relationship yeah. allegedly. And I'm not the greatest, uh, you know, I'm not the most versed guy when it comes to his technical aspects. That was a joke, but it's not, it's, it's, it's a real thing. I don't know anything about amps or all of that kind of stuff too much. I just, I just know when it sounds good, when it doesn't. I know how to tinker with them a little bit, and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, I, 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 I know what I want to hear, and I've been able to at least translate it to, to my friend Dave, who knows how to make that. And I love doing that. Make make that yeah. technically happen, you know. So you know, someone, so someone says, hey, "Can you make it more blue?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah. more, more black. Okay, it's, it's I think I understand. Jimmy, it's the old Jimi Hendrix thing, right? Yeah. I want it to sound like it's underwater. I want yeah. it to, yeah. you know, yeah. like, oh, okay. Well, uh, it's my job to <laughs> it's my yeah. job to interpret yeah. Yeah. What, right. exactly. what it is yeah. that the artist wants. Yeah, whoever it be, you know. It takes a village, man. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a village to rock. <laughs> I think we've got enough information about this, so we will come back for another video and we will discuss the, the rig. But one thing I do want to talk about tone-wise while I've got Jerry here, your JC Wah. Okay, yeah. Where did that, where was that birth? Because that's darker sounding than... It's a little bit darker, and uh, a little bit darker with a... Uh, Bigger you throw, know, right? Yeah, different throw. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it is adjustable, but, but uh, again, that was another thing that, you know, working with the guys at Dunlop and Uchida and, and uh, you know, Jimmy and Kehoe, uh, it was something we just kind of worked on, made something to make that was a little bit more fit to me. Because the thing I like about it is, is when you've got your foot back, especially when it's plugged into this, when you've got your heel down. Right. The low end remains tight, yeah, intact, yeah. especially through yeah. a double J. It's, it's like kind of nice. like shankery kind of thing, you know. It's like was, he, it's like it almost sounds, it almost sounds like he was well, playing yeah. with.
thing on, but I don't think he was. It's just how he played, you know. Yeah. But but it uh, it's got a little bit of that, and and the cool thing is uh, uh, is seeing that a lot of other people really like that that pedal as well. I've seen that pedal used by a lot of guys, and like, cool. I'm going, you know, I'm glad, yeah, glad it works for somebody yeah, else we, other than just me. We just did uh, yeah. we did a similar thing with with Lizzie Hale, and she has you. Oh, well. cool! <laughs> right and on. she took great right pleasure on. in saying, "Yeah, I put my I put my a seven-inch leather heel <laughs> yeah. on Jerry she every can, night. She can, <laughs> she, you can put it on me anytime you want." <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. All right, Thank you. cool, man. All right, all right, cool, Dave. Hey, all right.